it's Miss Miklos, and in today's lecture, we are continuing on with 8.5. Last time, we focused on the fundamental counting principle, and today we're going to talk about selections and arrangements. And what we're going to see is that the vocabulary that we use is very important. Okay, um, today specifically, we're talking about combinations and permutations. Combinations we've already seen, um, that was the way that we found the coefficients for the binomial theorem. Permutations is something totally new, so let's get into the difference between these two. For example, it is possible to select two letters from the letters ABC in three ways, AB, AC, and BC. We call each selection a combination. However, if the order of the selection matters, then we have six ways, and each arrangement is called a permutation. So the big thing I want you guys to get out of that is that in a combination, the order is not important. AB would be the same thing as BA. So that would be something like, um, I am taking a committee of four people out of your class um, to throw us a great end of the year party, okay? Um, it doesn't matter the order that I choose you guys in. Regardless, it's the same four people on the committee. That would be a combination. Now, if we were electing positions like a president, a, a vice president, a secretary and a treasurer, then the order matters because it is very different if you are the president versus if you're the secretary. So that would be a permutation. When we have permutations, there are some terms that we need to be aware of. Um, arrangement is one of them that we will see quite a bit. Um, and that's signaling to us that the order actually matters. So we've previously learned that NCR is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. We've also learned that we can get to this in our graphing calculator using math and then choosing the probability menu. So let's go ahead and compute some of these by hand. This should be really redundant. We should be great at these after our long 40 minute video on binomial theorem. But just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna do three times three minus two factorial times two factorial. So I get three factorial over one factorial, two factorial. I know these reduce to just be three because this is one times two, this is one times two times three. So we end up just getting three as our answer. So in reality, what this is telling me is if I have three letters and I have to choose two different ways, there are three different ways that we could put those. And if we look back here, that's exactly what we saw here. There are three different ways we could go about doing that problem. Four combination three, that would be four factorial over four minus three factorial, three factorial. So I have four factorial over one factorial, three factorial, and this reduces to be four. So this is saying if I had four letters and I was choosing three of them, there would be four different ways to go about doing that. So let's get into an actual problem here. So for all you seniors out there, in order to keep your 85% in pre-calculus so that you don't have to take the final exam, you need at least an 80% on the next quiz. How many ways are there of scoring exactly an 80% on a 10 question true false quiz? So the very first question we need to ask ourselves is, is the order important? Doesn't matter which eight questions I get right. And the answer is no. So since the order doesn't matter, I know it's going to be a combination. We know our n value has to be bigger than our r value. That's what we learned last, um, I guess it was two videos ago. So in this case, there are 10 questions. So I'm going to have 10 combination. We want to get eight of them correct. So I have 10 factorial 
over 10 minus 8 factorial, 8 factorial. So 10 factorial over 2 factorial, 8 factorial. Obviously, we could also just put this straight into our calculator, but, you know, I just love math so much I want to do it by hand here. Um, 90 divided by 2 is 45. So believe it or not, there are 45 ways in order to get a true 80% uh, on a 10-question true-false quiz. So lots of different ways that you could get that grade. So now we're going to move on to what a permutation is. Okay, the big thing here, the number of permutations of R objects from N objects is N factorial over N minus R factorial. Notice we don't have this extra R in there. So if you guys go to that same math menu, go to probability, um, you guys will see that there is an NPR button in your calculator. We can use that. That's great. Okay, I'm just going to do this by hand, though. I'm going to say 3 factorial over 3 minus 2 factorial. So I get 3 factorial over 1 factorial, which ends up being 6. So what this is telling me is if the order matters, how many arrangements can I have of two letters if I'm choosing from three? So this is like the very first problem we saw where we saw there were actually six different ways to do it. Okay, for number five, this would be 26 factorial over 26 minus 3 factorial. So 26 factorial over 23 factorial, this is going to become 24 times 25 times 26, which is 15,600. So one thing that we are going to see is that when the order does matter, there are going to be way more options. Okay, there's going, we're going to get bigger answers. And as I already said, um, there are going to be some key terms that we need to look for, such as arrangements, and we'll see some other terms as we move along. The other thing we're going to see is something we call the factorial rule. So if we have n different items, there are n factorial arrangements. Okay, so for example here, number six says how many different arrangements? First of all, this fact that it says arrangements signals to me that it is a permutation. It means that the order matters of the letters A, B, and C. So I want to show us that there's three different ways. The first way we could do it is 3P3. And that would be like 3 factorial over 3 minus 3 factorial, which is 6. The other way I could do it, so I'm writing or, if I'm arranging all three of these, our factorial rule is telling me that I could just say 3 factorial to find our answer. So this would be 6. And I guess I'm going to say there's a third way. We could also really think of this like the fundamental counting principle, where I have three different options in the first spot. Then, since I'm using one of those, we have two left over that could be in the second spot, and then only one left over in the third spot. And once again, that is 6. So I just want to highlight to us that there are definitely different ways that we could think about this. The key thing that I'm going to stress and be kind of annoying about is the fact that we need to determine does the order matter. If the order matters, we know it is a permutation. Okay, so number seven says how many three-letter permutations are possible? Well, that basically is the same problem we just did, so we're going to say our answer here is six. Because if we did 3P3, we would get 6. And I already highlighted those other methods we could use. Okay, how many arrangements, and once again, I'm going to highlight this word here, are possible from five books? Only three are used at a time. This time, since I'm not using all five, we cannot use that factorial rule. So what I'm going to do instead is 5 permutation 3. So this would be like 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. 
So 5 factorial over 2 factorial becomes 3 times 4 times 5, which is 60. If you guys had wanted to, um, you would notice that this actually could also be used as a fundamental counting principle problem. There are five options in the first spot, four options in the third, uh, I can't even talk here, four options in the second spot, and three options in the third spot. When I multiply all those together, I get 60. Okay, so lots of different ways we could think about these problems. Number nine says, how many ways can three people, Amy, Bob, and Chuck, be seated in a row? Okay, so here, it doesn't say like a fancy word. It actually says arrangements down here. But if it didn't, I know that it, if we're seating people, the way that we could seat them, Amy, then Bob, is different than Bob, then Amy. Okay, so we do need to pay attention to the order here. So... We could do three factorial, we could do three permutation three, we could do three times two times one, and all of them are going to tell us that there are six ways. But it's asking me here to also list the arrangements. So the first one would be Amy, Bob, Chuck. Then it could be Amy, Chuck, Bob. We could have Bob, Amy, Chuck, or Bob, Chuck, Amy. We also could have Chuck, Amy, Bob, and Chuck, Bob, Amy. So we can see that there are six different ways in which they could be seated. Okay, time for one of my favorite ones. So it says, for their game against the modern-day butterflies, get it, monarch butterflies, Miss Miklos has to write a Lancer lineup of the nine starters from her talented softball team. In how many different orders can she make this recipe for success? So first thing we need to think about, does the order matter? And yes, it does, because if you're batting first versus if you're batting fifth, that's a very different lineup, okay? It says that I've already chosen the nine starters, so I could do nine permutation nine if I wanted. I could do nine factorial. Or we could set it up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I could say, okay, there's 9 in the first spot, then there's 8 because I already chose one of them, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so any of these would be totally fine. And so if we went ahead and did this, I would get 362,000 and 880 ways to make the lineup. So if any of you guys thought coaching and figuring out who the starters are was easy, maybe this gives you a different perspective. In fact, let's say I was choosing the nine starters out of all of my Lancer varsity team this year. Um, our softball team has 18 varsity players. So if I was choosing the nine starters, I would have to do 18 P9, which would be such a large number that my calculator cannot even handle it, 1.76 times 10 to the 10th power. So the possibilities are almost endless on the different ways that we could write the lineup. So as we're seeing, um, combinations and permutations are not difficult to compute, the difficult part is seeing, does the order matter? So that is the question we have to ask ourselves every single time. Okay, um, the final thing that we are talking about today is permutations with repeated elements. We call these distinguishable permutations. Um, so the way that we do this, it is in factorial, over n sub 1 factorial, n sub 2 factorial, n sub 3 factorial, when those are all repeats. So in general, repetitions are taken care of by dividing the permutation by the number of objects that are identical. And to me, that sounds slightly confusing. So let's look at number 11. Okay, so it says, how many different six-digit numerals can be written using the following? 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, and 3. 
Okay, so since I have things that are repeating, I'm going to have to think about this as a distinguishable permutation. The reason being, 4, 5, 3 is the same as this 4, this 5, and 3. So we have to take that into account. So altogether, we have six numbers, so I'm going to do six factorial over. Now, this is when we need to pay attention. Okay, I have two different fours, so I'm gonna write two factorial. I have three different fives, so I'm gonna write three factorial. And then I have one three, so I can write one factorial. Okay, so if whatever, however large my group is, that's what I'm putting down here in the denominator. So going through this, okay, this would be like four times five times six, which would give me 120 divided by two, which would be 60. So there are 60 different ways that I could write a six digit numeral using these values. Okay, final question of the day, hooray. Um, this is highlighting the lovely Mrs. Hantula, who is um, about to have their third child. But this says Mr. and Mrs. Hantula want to have six children. They really don't, this is a lie. But they're hoping to have four boys and two girls. In how many different orders can this Brady Bunch occur? Side note, how many of you guys even know what the Brady Bunch is? And obviously, the Brady Bunch was a TV show. Okay, so the way we would go about doing this, they want to have six children. That is the total number, so that's what I'm putting in the numerator. It says they're hoping to have four boys, so I'm going to do four factorial in the denominator and two girls, so I have two factorial. So when I simplify this, this would be five times six, so 30 divided by 2 would give us 15. So there are 15 different orders that they could have kids. There are six children in order to have four boys and two girls. And um, don't bug Mrs. Hantula about this. This was just a joke. But they are halfway on their way here to the six children. So anyways, um, the key thing I want to stress today permutations, the order matters. Combination, the order does not matter. So on your suggested problems and your homework for tonight, you guys will see a lot of problems. That is the very first thing you always need to ask yourself.